Hello, my name is Stanley Heller. Welcome to The Struggle. The Struggle is shown on 20 cable stations from Vermont to Manhattan and 24-7 on the Internet at thestruggle.org. On the program today, video of a protest rally in New Haven, Connecticut at the home of a powerful member of Congress, Rosa DeLauro. A small rally to protest her silence at the Israeli court decision that paves the way for the destruction of a Palestinian home for the fifth time. Then back to January to New York City to give you a chance to see part of a speech by one of the greatest actresses of our time, Vanessa Redgrave, a woman who stood with the Palestinian people for decades even at a cost to her own career. And at that same meeting, actor and playwright Najla Saeed giving a reading from one of her plays. She's the daughter of the late Palestinian Amer American intellectual giant Edward Said. All today on The Struggle. This is the home of Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro. And we've come here because we've tried faxing her, we've tried calling her, and she doesn't respond. And the issue of the moment is an Israeli Supreme Court decision to allow the demolition of a Palestinian home in Anata, Jerusalem. The demolition for the fifth time since 1998. And it's a pattern of demolitions. 24,000 Palestinian homes have been destroyed since 1967. About a quarter because of the excuse that they don't have a permit. Now the whole thing with permits is bogus because under international law Israel has no right to extend its laws about permits to occupied territories. But even if it was just the discrimination against Palestinians is that no permits ever get granted to Palestinians, or virtually none. They don't grant permits because the Palestinians have no choice, they build anyway. And the Israelis tear down the house and fine them and charge them for the bulldozer that knocks down the home. It's actually cheaper for Palestinians to tear down their own home. And they do it. I just received an invitation to witness a Palestinian tearing down his own home in Jerusalem. It happens time and time again. They have no hope. They pay incredible application fees. Salim Shawarma has spent $15,000 in application fees for the permits to build a house on his own land. You see the picture over here, it's a desolate place. I was there in 2007, and the Israelis will not allow it, and they tear it down. Now, the fourth, or third, I can't remember anymore, one of the demolitions was so traumatic to the family that they don't actually live there anymore. They gave it to become a peace center. They call it the Arabia Peace Center, in honor of his wife, and it's dedicated to the memory of two people. Rachel Corey, who was killed in Rafa in the Gaza Strip by a bulldozer, and Nuhal Swida. She lived also in Rafa, and her home was not being destroyed, but a neighbor's home was destroyed, and a wall came down right on her. And these two women died, and the peace center was dedicated in her honor. This peace center. And this is what is at risk, could be knocked down at any time now because of the Israeli Supreme Court decision. As soon as we heard about this decision, we went uh, or called Washington office of Rosa DeLauro and they say, well, everybody's out, you get voicemail. And we faxed and emailed and have not heard one word about this uh, impending disaster to a Palestinian home. And it's not a what do you feel about this issue? Well, I feel really passionately about this issue. Five years ago, um, I went with a labor delegation, um, unionists from the Hartford Central Labor Council, from the postal workers and other unions, and we went 
to East Jerusalem, and we rebuilt Salim Shawamra's house for the fourth time. Um, his house is uh, located in Anada, East Jerusalem. Um, Palestinians have been living there f um, since before the roads were built during the Ottoman Empire. Um, Salim um, was denied the right to rebuild his house for no good reason. He, he was part. He was caught up in a dragnet by the Israeli officials who want to purge these areas of Palestinians and make them all Jewish so that when there's finally a settlement between um, Israel and the Palestinians um, that, e that Jerusalem cannot be, half of Jerusalem will not be a Palestinian capital. And this is a really treacherous policy. It shows that the Israeli government is really not interested at all um, in uh, any kind of Palestinian state since they're denying them even uh, the most elementary kind of sovereignty that is having their own capital inside East Jerusalem. And I have to tell you how brutal it looks um, in East Jerusalem. You see a wall goes right through um, people's homes to get to work. I saw uh, at rush hour before and after work, I saw people having to climb a 15-foot wall at risk of being shot in order to get to their jobs. So this whole policy of demolishing houses, the houses that are being demolished are not the houses of terrorists, they're not the houses of uh, militants, they're the houses of anybody who falls within a geographic range that the Israeli government would like to uh, claim as part of their historic capital. So it's a really treacherous policy and um, it's very important that uh, the U.S. government stop funding this kind of thing and that we defend um, the right of Palestinians to their own self-determination. Now were you involved in uh, making the uh, mural on the Arabia house? Yes, actually um, I helped raise money in the United States. Um, we got several thousand dollars from the Teamsters Union, from the Oil Workers Union, from many other union activists and activists of, from other milieus to create a beautiful mural on the side of the Shwamra House. It, it, it celebrated the life of Rachel Corey and a young Palestinian woman who was martyred on the same day that Rachel Corey was run over by an Israeli um, bulldozer. One of the things the mural was one of three, and the whole series was designed to hearken back, to remind people of the time before 1948, when Arab um, uh, Unionists and, and Jewish uh, Unionists uh, actually fought together to try to organize the British-owned railroads um, inside um, what, what today is currently Israel and Palestine. And um, they were often prevented from attempts at unity, were often smashed by Ben-Gurion and other historical figures of the Zionist movement. But, but the memory of the fact of internationalism, of working people fighting across borders against their common oppressors is still alive. And our mural was designed to, to keep that memory alive. And is it on the house or on a wall near it? It's actually on the wall of the house that you see um, as you come down to the house from the road. And it's very poignant because the house sits on a ridge and then there's a deep valley and on the next hill is a huge, grotesque, obscene Israeli detention center, a new detention center. So you have this um, this house that's with the help of internationals from all over the world has been rebuilt four times um, and has been covered with art from artists from all over the world and rebuilt by internationals from all over Europe and the United States, um, Israeli Jews and Palestinian activists to say enough uh, that we will continue to struggle together to see that um, Palestinians have the, you know, get to enjoy self-determination in our lifetime and to assert that that can